Hello and welcome, my name is Mikolas, she, they, and this is Literally Graphic. And today we are looking at Incognito by Matt Johnson and Warren Pleece, published in 2008 by Vertigo. Very strong content notes for racially motivated violence, including lynching, character death, heavy use of the n-word, violence against women, potential misgendering, and an anti-trans slur. Matt Johnson is a prolific author of fiction books and comics, plus one interesting looking non-fiction book. In his introductory author's note, Johnson says the book was inspired by a combination of childhood fantasy and the historic figure Walter White, a leader of the NAACP who also went undercover as a white man to investigate lynchings. According to Wikipedia, quote, in 2007, Matt Johnson was named the first USA James Baldwin Fellow by United States Artists. Illustrator Warren Pleece is British, co-created a self-published comic with his brother, and has done other work for Vertigo. And today's Black Booktuber highlight goes to Reading in Black. She started her channel about eight months ago and has been going strong ever since. A creative energy casting a fresh light on many books that had been on my TBR for far too long. Links in all the usual places. Circling back to Incognito, some keywords that come to mind are noir, city versus country, working class, moonshine, and anti-black racism. Goodreads official description is short and to the point. In the early 20th century, when lynchings were commonplace in the American South, a few brave reporters Light-skinned African Americans risked their lives to expose the truth. This undercover work was known as Going Incognito. Zane Pinchback's latest case hits close to home. His brother has been arrested for murder. End quote. Themes of biological family and the evil stupidity of white supremacy are both prominent in Incognito. As far as wordiness goes, flipping back through the book, I did note that there was often a lot of dialogue going on. Johnson does a good job of moving the plot along at a very fast clip while keeping the stakes feeling very real. The art took a little bit of thinking about, but was overall pretty good. I felt like I was going to mix people up, but it mostly worked out in the end. I found some key differences between the two characters that we start out following, and their personalities quickly reveal themselves to be very different. A stark black and white Racial differences were not super obvious most of the time, but I could see how that played into the questions around race that were at play in the story. Looking at this book's treatment of gender, I would start out by saying that this is another fairly male-centered book, with most of the good guys and bad guys being guys. Most of the characters are also acting out what I would expect to be fairly typical misogyny and gender roles of the time. It goes a lot lighter than many noir titles I've picked up. I personally found the complicated antagonist of Alonzo's girlfriend to be a nice counterweight to many of the assumptions we are seeing of the time period when it comes to the treatment of apparently cis female characters. That said, the way that the murder mystery plays out left a lot to be desired. Typical for noir titles, the mystery centers around the murder of a presumed white and presumed female person. Spoiler alert! It turns out this person, assigned female by their family, went through a whole lot of trouble to be seen as a man. Why might you ask? Well, our main character thinks it was so Francis could, quote, live without limitations, end quote. Missing entirely that his brother's girlfriend, Michaela, in contrast to most of the women in the story, is doing this just fine while remaining solidly cisgendered. And of course, Michaela is the one character to actually go beyond simply misgendering Francis, who, as I already said, went really out of their way to be seen as man and started throwing around slurs. Overall, I am not the be-all and all judge on what degree of transphobic this aspect of the book is. Different things are going to be important to different people, and my low level googling reveals no one's thoughts on the subject. At this point in time, having not read any other Matt Johnson titles, and considering the time of setting and time of publication, this gaping absence of queerness seems to speak to ignorance. Although I reserve the right to change my mind, I feel like Johnson assumes that Frances is a cis woman and should have provided more space for Frances to express this. While queerness and transness have existed throughout all time and space, my perception is that the behavior of the characters around Frances is fairly realistic to that particular time and space. 
while many other offensive ideas and behaviors are subverted or undercut, Francis is just a plot device. Sexuality beyond heterosexual norms is avoided. There's a lot of heterosexual reproduction going on within the bounds of legal marriage, however. Plus, for all her not really being one of the good guys, Alonzo and Michaela are involved in an interracial romantic relationship that would have gotten them in a lot of trouble at the time. Race is obviously a huge focus of the book. It deconstructs a lot of assumptions people have around race in a way that seems empowering. The ending felt a bit too neat to me. We shall see how the sequel follows up. Class was obviously not a particular focus of the book, but it also didn't feel like it was punching down on working class people either. As someone who does enjoy seeing people using genre and pulpy stories to do something different, I did mostly enjoy this book, despite its shortcomings, so it's a solid 3 out of 5 stars for me. Bye y'all, keep reading, and resist white supremacy. And as always, Literally Graphic is created on land that should be given back to the traditional land holders, which in this case is, to my knowledge, the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, Anishinaabe people, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Huron-Wendat Nation.